I'm celebrating Halloween with some brand new inspiration for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. We're going to start off with a fun witch board. This is a thrift flip. I'm going to use some Elmer's school glue, some brushes, orange and black paint. I'm going to use this little sanding block, and I'm going to use two stencils, this one and this one. Here's that board. Of course, I always start off with clean thrifted pieces, and I'm going to use a sanding block to just sand off any oils, anything that might be on the top of there, so that nothing interferes with our paint being put down. I'm going to take a dry clean cloth and just wipe off the dust from all of that. I'm going to grab that black paint, and this is jet black. And I'll start off by covering this board. Now, you're not going to see me doing the back, uh, but if you're doing this, do the back too. Certainly, you want a finished piece if you plan on selling it or giving it to anyone. But I'm going to go down the sides as well and all the way around that handle. You could even go as far as to get down in that little hole where you tie it if you would like. Okay, once it's dried, it's going to look like this. That's only one coat. I'm going to add on some school glue. I have not done a crackle paint in many, 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 many years. But way back in the either 80s or 90s when it was popular. And everybody was just loving it. So it looks like it has come back. And I think it is perfect for vintage pieces, for rustic, for farmhouse. So we're going to give it a shot on this Halloween decor. If I had chippy brushes, I would be using them, but I've gone through them and I need to buy some more. So all I have is this, it is a paintbrush. It looks like a barbecue brush, but it's actually a paintbrush, but it is very soft, synthetic type bristles. And I just prefer those chippy brushes a little bit better. So once I have that laid down, I'll let it start drying. You see that some little bubbles are coming up in there and it's streaky. It's thicker in some spots than others. And you'll see once it's painted the relevance of why I'm telling you that. You can pay attention to where it's more paint or, or more glue, that is, and where it's less because it's going to make a difference in the way that this looks. Now, from what I have seen when you do crackle paint, because I don't remember how I did it, you need to just go over the paint like one time. Go over that glue section with the paint just one time. You don't want to keep going over and over again because your crackles will come out. So because I'm using um, a bigger brush than I would like, I don't have the, the control that I would like to have over the paint and the way I put it down. So obviously I've got it way too thick in some spots and thin in other spots. But in the end, I think it looks fine as far as a piece of weathered wood. Uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind when you're doing yours. And you can use any color paints you want to use. You could even put the orange underneath and the black on top. So I'm going to have really light, streaky type. You can see how it looks right there. Be careful with your heat tools. The closer you get, the more bubbly it will get and the more it will come off. Of course, if that's the look you're going for, then great. So once it's dry, it looks like this. You can see there's some bubbles that dried in there, but those will sand off and add to the look. I'm just going to grab this piece of 60 grit paper. I don't have the sander that goes with this because I thrifted it, but I just use it with my hand rather than the machine. And I'm going to start kind of uh, brushing this over all of the painted areas. I'm also going to go down my edges and around the edge of the board on the bottom, the top, the handle, just to rough it up, just to give it a little more of an aged look. And it kind of brings those edges back out as if it is worn. So this looks like, it reminds me of a paddle. Like when we were in elementary school, our principal had a paddle and he would paddle the boys when they didn't behave. <laughs> and girls too, I guess. But um, generally it was the football players that got the paddlings. That's what it looks like to me. But we're gonna call this a thin breadboard or a charcuterie board because you can, you know, you could have used it for that when it was food safe. But now it's not food safe anymore. So it's now going to be just the decor piece. So I'm just using these um, 
they're like paper clips, paper clamps, whatever, to hold this on because it's the right, uh, it opens up just the perfect amount to hold on to that stencil to keep it from sliding. And now you see me putting this painter's tape over all of the little pieces that I don't want to paint so I don't accidentally get it in those areas with the brushes. It's kind of difficult with a brush to keep it inside of those little those little cutout pieces. It can be kind of hard with a round brush in that stipple in motion. So but you can do this any way you would like. I thrifted these stencils, but you can get stencils anywhere, so you can get them anywhere. I am going to use the little swirly method. And this is a method I know that you can do. You can also do the little stippling method, but the one where you just kind of pounce it up and down gives it more of a rough type edge. So it won't be real crisp. Keep that in mind when you do it. I'm only gonna do one layer of this white paint to put the words on the board because I don't mind that it looks kind of old and aged and I'm going to age it even more once it is completely done. So I'm gonna go over both of the words the same way and you can allow it to dry or go ahead and take it off either way it's uh, still wet here and I'm gonna go ahead and take that off because you see all these little cross areas those little lines that look like they're through the paper we're gonna have to address those as well as put this one on and I did put this down with it being wet it's just barely damp though because I offloaded so much paint it, it dried really quick it's a chalk paint so it dried really quick now I'm going to use that same little method, little swirl, 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 all over this on the outside and then the witch in the middle. I like to use my stencils this way, kind of unpredictable, so it doesn't look like anyone else's. So this is what it looks like, but see, this is the lines I was talking about. So the essential stencil, this is not a sponsored video, but they, uh, they sent me these with the stencils that I tried out before in other video and I really love these these are perfect for filling in those little areas now if you like that look with the lines in them go ahead and leave them in but I want to close those off so I'm just gonna go around every little area and you can also use these brushes there's such a fine tip on some of these that you can you know kind of go back over areas that maybe have a skip spot or maybe your edge isn't as crisp and clean as you would like it to be just go back over there and and uh you know fix it up make it look nice so now once it is dry i'm going to take that sanding block and go over it it's also taking off some of that orange paint that's underneath i'm going to hit some more areas that i want to and then make sure that i've sort of blended the white out just a little bit so that it also looks like it's aged not going to go crazy on it. I don't want to completely erase my wording, but I do want it to blend in so it looks right. Now you can seal this with Mod Podge spray, any acrylic spray sealer, or you can just use some Mod Podge if you would like. I want to add a little something to the top of this because say you want to give it as a gift or you want to sell it, giving it a pretty little bow or something to adorn it would just give it a little extra touch. So I'm going to pinch this up in the middle and then I will push it down so we got tails and two loops. I'm gonna cut my tails off. I don't want them to be very long. And you've seen this before. You see how that's not double-sided, so that's okay. This kind of bow will get all of the pretty sides outward. I'm gonna grab a piece of jute. It, that's what I had in my hand, but if I'd have had, if I would have known that that black that's right there above it would have been strong enough to withstand me tugging on it and tying it in double knots, I would have just used that. But that's okay. Lesson learned. Save yourself some time by doing, you know, the easy thing, the easy way. Now I'll fluff these out just a little bit. And it's just a very, very simple little bow. I'm going to cut these at a slant. I'm not even going to bother dovetailing them because sometimes a good old slant just works. It just works. So I'll cut it off. And then I'm going to grab that black and then go around the middle of it so I can cover the jute up. And I'm just going to tie a couple of knots. And I didn't pull too hard because I just really don't know. It's like a paper type material and I just don't really know how 
good it would hold up to all the tugging I do when I'm making bows. Well, I will use it to tie on around to the back. And y'all, paint the back. I just didn't take the time to do it. I'm trying to get five crafts out at a time for y'all, so just paint the back. All right. Now, you can take some little artificial greenery, you can or blackery, as we say for Halloween. So, there's the beautiful glittery eucalyptus and an oak leaf together and you can just put that in there that just gives it a little something makes it pretty for presentation if you want to give it to somebody and it also looks pretty if you want to um, just use it in your decor my end wasn't as crispy as i like it so i just trimmed off that little bump and then this is how that one is going to look the next one is the magic poppy Okay, y'all didn't have a rose, so we're using a poppy. We're gonna take flat black. This little hand with the globe. You can see it's originally from Target. I got it at Dirt Cheap. I have some of this lace trim. It is black. We're gonna take the plastic off, and this is actually glass, not plastic. And this little hand is gold. This just looks so simple and modern. I want this to look witchy, so we're gonna spray paint it black and then spritz it with a little bit of this olive green or Italian olive. Once that's done and dried, I'm gonna find some red nail polish, E6000, some false fingernails. These are little bitty ones. And believe me, they were some that I had in my stash and I just don't wear nails, y'all, I don't. This is from a cruise I took many, many years ago. But I saved them because I save everything. And I'm glad I did now because now we can make this hand a little bit spookier. I'm just gonna E6000 those little nails on there, trying to choose the ones that are gonna fit best. And so this is how it looks. Coffin nails would be really cool for a witch. Also those almond nails would be really pretty too. And you can get these types of nails from Dollar Tree and you can often get those in fluorescent colors or you know different colors and shapes so you just do whatever you like now I thought this was my ox blood it is not this is more of a pinkish or bluish color um, red and I was really going for the ox blood because it is really rich dark and a warm color but that's okay because um you know we'll use what we have and so this is what I'm going to use. And y'all know how to paint fingernails. We're not going to show you how to do this on all of them. If you don't have nail polish, grab some red paint and put that on. So I'm going to do two coats of it because these are French tips and you can see right through them. And let them dry. I could do another coat, but I'm not going to. And I also went around the nail beds with a little bit of black paint and a real skinny brush just to give it a little depth. Now we're going to put a cuff or a little lacy, roughly cuff around this witch's hand because you know she has a sleeve right so this is the cuff i'm going to make sure that i have enough to go around the bottom and then we're going to double this up and make it two i'm hoping that y'all can find these types of little hand something similar to it at dollar tree i know i have i know y'all have seen it in my my final screen my end screen while i do my reveals that i have the little it's like a ceramic white hand and it has a little thumbs up i got that from dollar tree many years ago so if you could find something like that at dollar tree it would be really good i love how that green looks over the black isn't that nice on the hand i like that so i'm just running a thin bead all the way around the bottom and you notice there are two two uh little shelved areas on that wrist area two little areas and you can see that i'm folding this down once it's the cool the glue has cooled i'm gonna fold it down and out of the way and then i'll start on the one that's right above it now hindsight you know what they say about it if i would have done this first it would have been fine but y'all know how i work here i go by how it feels i look at it and then if i want to add to it i go back and add to it that's kind of what happened here on this one so now look at that look at the double sleeve look how pretty that is Yes, she's a very elegant, very elegant witch with her flat nails. Yes, she is. So this is how the little hand portion of it is going to look. I'm satisfied with that. Here is the one red flower I have in the house. 
I didn't have a rose. I didn't have a black rose. I didn't have anything. It is the summertime and we are doing half a wane. So I'm using what exactly I have in this house. I know that I can pull this off. This is the good quality. I'm just going to pull it right off the end. And then if everything's stuck together and this is a really well made flower, I can go ahead and cut that little point off. I'm just going to try to figure out, and yes, it does fit there in the hand. Let's put a spider on it. I mean, why not? Let's put a spider in this magic poppy. I thought about the magic flowers and how in Wizard of Oz they were in the field. You know, they were in the field of poppies and they went to sleep. So this flower is going to be a poisonous flower as well, maybe a sleeping flower. So it needs to be put under glass where the witch can save it and use it when she wants to, when she needs that little power or that spell. I'm going to put some glue down here and then rest this right on top, not to hold the glass in place, but to keep that poppy from moving around inside of there. And um, this is how it's going to look. I think that is cute. It's different, right? We like different. Different's good. That's what I tell my kids. Just because something's different doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that it's different. It's special. I think it's a good lesson that we all can take. Being different is not a bad thing. Look at that. Ooh, yes. Yes, girl. If I'd have had some type of a ring, she'd be wearing that too. All right. Hocus Pocus wreath is next. So you see this little sign. That is a very famous quote from Hocus Pocus. We're going to grab some twine, some ribbons. I'm going to use this little cauldron that is from St. Patrick's Day. Or this little pot of gold. And this little piece of fabric. I'm also going to use a car wash cloth. You're going to pull everything off the top. Now, when I was pulling off the coins, the little pieces of tinsel came off too. So I just left it off. I just went with it. You can save your shamrocks and stuff for a holiday, another holiday if you would like. Now I'm going to use this almost as batting. We want to beef this up a little bit. So I'm just going to cut it off where it's a little bit closer, where I have a few inches on each side. And then I'm going to cut, kind of curve it so it's just a little easier to work with on the tops and the bottom corners. It's going to make it a little easier to manage. So you're going to use your little clips and fold up. So how many of y'all have actually went and bought these clips? You've seen me do this a billion times, so you know how often I use my clips and what a great investment it is, even though it only costs me $2.50 because I have two packages of them now, and uh, they're well worth it. So how many of y'all are actually using your clamps this way? Are you doing it? Are you learning from these videos? I certainly hope you are. Love having you here. Always, always love having you here. I'm bringing you new things. Okay, girls and fellas, remember, we always protect our fingers, right? Always. Clip, clip. So we're going to go in there with our glue. I'm going to go right around the frame and then press down the cloth. You can then put the clamp right back over it if you want, or you can just leave it off because it's going to grasp onto that fuzzy cloth very easy. And I'm just going to poke it down and continue around the circle. Now I know I've got it where I want it to be because I had clamps in it. So I know exactly that I have enough fabric and that it is as centered as it's going to be. And when I get back to my starting point, just gonna go around it and push it down. Okay, you can trim it up if you want, but it's not necessary. I'm also gonna trim down this piece of fabric. You get whatever fabric you want. You could even use a handkerchief from Dollar Tree. You can use an old shirt, whatever you have. This came from some overstock Amazon stuff that I got at dirt cheap. It was a package that had a huge variety. So you will be seeing more when we do Halloween uh, this year. So be sure that you subscribe to the channel because I wouldn't want you to miss any of this Halloween goodness. That's right. You don't want to miss it. Okay. Now, once it's all covered, same process as when you put down the fluffy stuff, we're going to make a bow. I want to use some of this ribbon and I'm going to use some of the purple. I'm going to use these colors of paint, paint brushes. And these little half rounds will be painted. Going to use some painter's tape. Now, this was a tip from one of my subscribers. So this is what I'm going to show you now. Use your painter's tape. 
put a little on the back, flip it around, put it on the table, and then you can easily just stick your little beads or whatever you're painting right down on it. Thank you very much. I do not recall exactly which one or several of you who told me about this, but I'm telling you right now that it is a game changer. No more hot glue and having to pick the hot glue off the back. That's what I was doing. Okay, so I am going to paint some of these orange, some of these yellow, and some of these purple. These little half rounds are going to go around the little sign right up there in the corner. They look like Skittles, don't they look like candy? They really do. Now I want Skittles. So we're going to put these around here. Now I painted the edge black because it was a natural color. I'm going to flip it over onto the face and I am going to use some of my E6000 and put dots of E6000 on the back, line them up with the table, and press them into place. Now this worked all the way around to my starting point and I had to use a sanding block and an emery board to sand down one of the beads so that it would fit once we got back to the start. This little sign here also came from Amazon and I got it at Dirt Cheap. So what, what happens is they get products, they buy them by the Gaylords or the Cases or whatever and they bring them into the store then they set a price on them I guess it's stuff that they don't sell maybe on Amazon so they get it in these other stores and so that's how I I had the opportunity to get them very happy to see them too so then I'm gonna take my hot glue here and just go around the bottom just to help lock it into place because I definitely don't want anything moving so this is how it's going to look once that part is finished and now we're going to make a funky bow that's right we're making a funky bow 18 inch pieces we're going to do three 18 inch pieces of the stripes two of the purple and two of the orange each one of those pieces are going to be dovetailed and then we will hold them together with a zip tie my funky bows i prefer a zip tie they're really strong and they hold things together. So here's a black one. You can get these at Dirt Cheap. You can get them at Dollar Tree. You can get them at any craft store, any hardware store. All right, so I'm gonna take these pieces, fold them over so that they look like they'll be about nine inches. Then I'm going to take the top about a third and fold that over into a loop. And then we're gonna have the tails a little bit longer. You can see the difference. I'm gonna hold everything in my right hand because I am right-handed and I'm gonna use my left hand to make the folds and the little pleats I can do with both hands together. You see how that works? It's important when you're doing this bow to make sure that you don't get your patterns lined up with one another unless of course you're using all the same and you, if it's all the same color then it doesn't really matter. But you wanna kind of space them apart that way you can really see each one of them individually and you get like a little bite-sized burst of color. Since we're talking about candy down there, we may as well say it's a little burst, a little burst of excitement. When you change your pattern up a little bit, we don't want everything side by side. So you can kind of twist it in your hand. You see what I'm doing here. And then when I get back to the last bow, I'm going to grab it up, same process, and then push it into my hand with the rest of them. All right, this is how it looks. You can see that the tails are about the same length and the tops are about the same length. I'm gonna grab that zip tie. I'm still holding everything securely with my right hand. I'm gonna slide that zip tie on and cinch it down really tightly. I'm gonna take my scissors and cut that off or you can use wire snips. These are what were close at hand, so I used them. Now for a funky bow, I like to flip mine over and start flipping the bow tails down first. Whatever way works best for you is totally fine. These are all wired ribbons. I am going to fluff them down the pretty side toward the table. So you can see my stripe bow. Now all the pretty stuff is up. Now you can pull those apart. And the fact that they have wire just makes them kind of stay in place a little bit better. You can move those tails around and start fluffing up flipping flipping out the loops on the top oh my goodness i need a cup of coffee so bad right now <laughs> oh goodness are you coffee drinkers or tea drinkers i would love to know because i love my coffee i am gonna be honest with you i love it 
Probably love it a bit, a bit too much, but yeah, I do. I do love it. Now look at this beautiful bow. How pretty is this bow? And you can see that I'm trying to make sure that I have my colors separate. Nothing is piled on top of the other one. And what a beautiful bow. Now, so I was thinking on this part. You could take something to go around this part and cinch it around here if you wanted to. You could use ribbon. You could use a tie like this, which is how I was going to start. But then I changed my mind. You can double it up. You can... Um, just wrap the bottom part of the cauldron in one color and then do the top in a different color. You really don't see this top part of it because it's going to be under, it's going to have a bow on top. So I decided I wanted to take some of this little pom-pom ribbon and this was thrifted, but I know that you can get it at Dollar Tree. I've seen orange. Of course, I saw it in the Easter section, so hmm, it may be seasonal. But look in the, craft, the crafter's square section and see if you can find some little pom-poms. Because it makes, I don't know, it's just cute and playful to me. And it's purple, so it matches what we have going on. I'm going to just put a couple of drops of glue on the front just to hold it in place. And pull it around to the back and glue everything down. Now, I've got a piece of wire that is in my bow. Did not show y'all all of that but there's a piece of wire in the bow. And I'm gonna pull it through. You don't have to use wire if you don't want to. You can just use hot glue and just hot glue it, which was my original plan. But I decided that wire would make it a little more secure, so I just took that thin wire and kind of pushed it through the midsection of the bow and put it on. Now I'm flipping it upward with the excess and making a little hanger for the wreath. Perfect, two and one. Now, of course, I've laid it on the bow. I'm going to have to fluff it back out. But, y'all, I don't mind fluffing bows. Not one little bit. I love the way that it looks when you get a beautiful bow formed correctly. Or in the way that makes you happy. By all means, if you don't like bows, you don't even have to put a bow on yours. You can grab the hot glue gun also. And now that you have it in place, you can tack it down if you would like so that it doesn't move at all and it doesn't wobble at all. And you can also tack down the little area where we put the, uh, the hanger so it doesn't move. So this is how that is going to look and look how adorable. Now, if you don't have the signs like this and you're watching this at Halloween, go and get you a cheap little sign. Dollar Tree has fantastic Halloween decor. I mean, their Halloween decor really to me is better than the Christmas. To tell you the truth, that's just my opinion. Really like it. How cute and fun is this? Hocus Pocus fans out there. All right, the next is a witch wreath. Over in the little garden section, I'm going to take some green mesh, some purple mesh. This I got when I was thrifting and it's just one of those faces you put on a pumpkin and then you can put the light behind it but I saw it and I thought no I know what I'm gonna do with her if you can't find one of these grab a Halloween mask then I have an orange tree that I thrifted but you can use the white trees from Dollar Tree if you have the black trees that Halloween uh, that Dollar Tree puts out at Halloween those would work as well but I love the orange in this because this is probably one of the most playful wreaths that I've ever done and I love the way that the orange looks with that purple and green it's just so I say it again fun it's just fun y'all it's fun so I'm gonna pull this apart and make this like a teardrop swag rather than having this be a Christmas tree and you can do that by pulling it to the sides pushing it to the sides and you give it sort of a teardrop shape when you get all the way to the end. And this ends up being about 24 inches probably. So here's that plastic witch's face. I got my mesh and I'm gonna do the mesh part first because the, the witch, I know she's gonna be in there somewhere, but we need to work on this. So let's stack this up. Now you can put your purple on top or the green on top. It doesn't matter because when we fluff it out, you're going to see both of them. I just love the way that looks together. Fun, fun. I'm going to squish this up on the end like I do with every swag that I make when I use deco mesh. I'm going to grab 
a little piece. These are the little extra ends from wreaths that I have made. And I save them in a Ziploc bag. And now look, they came in handy and I didn't have to cut anything up. I'm just going to take this and put it down on one of the branches on the top. You can start on either side that you would like because we're going to go all the way down, flip it around, and go back up to the top on the other side. I'm going to go about halfway up the branch because if I put it close to the inside, I'm not going to get a very com controllable poof. And I want my poofs to be controllable. We want to be able to manipulate them, right? So I'm going to squeeze down about 10 inches. Grab another one of those little ties twist that around there and then we'll use that to attach it to the next section you don't want them to lay down flat you want to push it up so i'm going to go up to about this is probably six inches the distance from the last tie and i'm going to twist that on and then press that branch back down this is a very easy process you can twist on the branches themselves if you want to but sometimes it will shrink down the look of your, um, the size or the width of your wreath. And I like for my wreaths and my swags to be kind of, you know, substantial. So again, 10 inches, I'm gonna take my little tie here, and twist it around so nothing comes out. Then I'll go down about another six inches, grab one of those branches, about halfway up one of those branches and twist that one on and then push the branch back down easy process here see and they're going toward the outside of the wreath and that's the idea we're going to have a third row in the middle so you don't have to worry about it not covering the middle you'll see what we do here in just a moment so now i'm trying to find another one about the right distance if you have different distance that you put it down then your poofs are going to be different sized when you puff them out so if you don't want to do that then be sure that you kind of space them uh, evenly apart. So I'm going down to the tip of it and putting just a little poof there. Okay, we're going to spin it around and do the same process all the way back up to the top. Once you get to the top, I'm going to grab a section, twist it down, and then I'm going to pull toward the center. Now, now we're going to work in the center. I'm going to pinch off about the same thing, about 10 inches. Twist it with a zip tie, and then I'm going to go down to the right side. You can see me on the right side. All right, once I get that one securely in place, we're going to go cross back over and to the left side. Same thing, we want the little poofs to be about the same size and the same distance. And then we're going to go around again, back over to the right twist it and put that down. So now the what's left on the back, you're going to cut off enough that you have a little extra and then you can just use a little zip tie or you can use just the wire on there itself, twist it around to lock it in place. You could also use an extra little piece of the zip tie that you had. You can fluff that out. And then we're going to start pulling apart the section. So green, then purple, then purple, then green, then green, then purple, then purple, then green. All the way around. You're going to pull whatever color you pull to the left, you'll pull it to the right the next time. See? Green and purple. Purple and green. You can see here what I'm doing. Green and purple all the way around that wreath and back up the center until it is completely poofed out and look how much coverage we have on here that's a lot of coverage can still see the orange underneath and i love that it looks fiery and mystical under there i like it all right so this is what that's going to look like and now we're going to work on her so she's plastic and hot glue would work, but she might pop off. Not to mention if we use super glue, then it's gonna take a while to dry. And we don't have that kind of dry time. So I'm just gonna make holes by using the tip of my hot glue gun in the bottom next to her chin and on the top of her head. They leave a little 
makes a little dimple, I guess, in it. So what I'm gonna do is just use my rough sander, sanding paper and just go over that so that it's flat and it doesn't stick out. Then I'll use these pipe cleaners that are exactly the same color as the mask and now I'm out of them. <laughs> I had one left, I think. And I'm gonna use these to attach her down to the wreath. Now, that will not go anywhere. And if you're using a plastic mask, same process, you can do it like this and it shouldn't go anywhere because she's gonna be wired down to that metal pole that's in the very middle underneath. So all you have to do is take your pieces after you've twisted them on and press them down into your form until you get where it is straddling over the metal and then you just twist them. You do the top and the bottom. And then we're gonna work on her hair. Yes, she is gonna have ringlets in her hair. And the reason is, it's summertime. She's not on the clock right now. She's not wearing her hat, it's too hot. She's not gonna do it. She ain't doing it. Yeah, she ain't doing it. So we're gonna just take rolls here and we're gonna make her some ringlets. We're gonna do a purple and you can just use your clamp. All we're doing is just rolling that into a little tight roll, like little penny curls. Then I'm going to take some green and we're gonna cut the same amount. It's gonna be 12 inches. I cut that off and you can use a rotary cutter uh, if you want to in your cutting mat, but if you don't have one, this is how we do it. I'm gonna roll this up, same as we did the purple. So we'll have a purple, a green, and a purple, or we'll have a green, a purple, and a green. We're gonna alternate. So we have purple and green, and then one more purple will go on the other side. Okay, so now we have her first little clump of ringlets. We're gonna use some more of those ties. I'm gonna cut these down into three pieces and this seems to work perfectly. Just using my little snips here. Found out these are actually jewelry cutters. That's what they are from a jewelry kit. But when you thrift stuff, you never know because there's no label. Okay, I'm gonna use that piece. I'm gonna twist around and then we'll leave that little piece as a stem. You can see her little ringlets? And chop off all those dead ends. Can't have her looking crazy. No, we can't. So you can see here, we've got three of the green and purple, and then we have two of the purple and green. I'm gonna start by adding her some bangs. She's gonna have it right on top of her head. You can glue it in the back or you can glue it in the top. Now I started off by gluing it like to the back onto the other one and it came off. So you'll see it positioned a little bit differently um, shortly because I was trying to hurry and I didn't hold it in place long enough. Now I'm using those little pieces to hold the glue to the back of the head. So that makes like a little stem and it works perfect to hold everything in place. But you've really got to hold it there for a minute for it to dry before you start trying to fluff around. You can see the bow came off, see that? Or not the bow, her bangs. I took her hair piece off. It's a toupee. We're gonna put it back on, but I can put it back on just right on the top of her head. Right there. So you can always start off like that if you want to. Or, you know, I didn't wanna get too much in front of her head because I didn't wanna cover her face up. And you could also paint your mask. If you have one that's solid green and you don't like this green, go ahead and paint it. I had considered painting her features, but then I thought, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave it just like this because she matches perfectly. So now I put two on the sides, you see on either side here, so that it's a little bit longer there. And then you can just make sure everything is glued in place. Add a little extra if you need to, just for that little bit of extra security. And her hair is lovely. Now, I wanna make her a really pretty... Y'all, when I was growing up, my grandmother was in a, um, she was in the church. She really, really loved her church and she always wore these blouses that had the little sash tie in the front. I cannot remember what they're called, but you just, it, it's almost like where the collar would be and then you just kind of tie it into a bow. And so that's what I kind of wanted to give this witch. We're gonna do cruffles though for this. So this is a little different. We're gonna make these 18 inch pieces. You're gonna curl 
roll in the bottom walk your fingers up and then roll in the other side this is going to make a cruffle or what's called a woodland woodland ruffle i think is what they call it i didn't make any of these things up i hear it from other people you know i'm not a professional i hear it from other people so that's how i'm going to pass it on okay so again here we go again i'm going to roll 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 just a little bit to lock in those little messed up ends there little frayed ends that you always get with the dollar tree deco mesh walk it up i got about four inches left that i'm gonna roll 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 and then squish it up to the center this is not a precise science just do the best you can i'm gonna do two greens and a purple and that is going to be the bow for her little shirt or her dress whatever it is she's wearing so you can use a clamp i just wanted to show you here you can use a clamp and then roll the other part and walk it up if you needed to do that. All right, I'm going to put those three together where I have my purple sort of in the middle and the green on the outsides. It's all going to end up looking like one piece, though. It's going to look like one piece. But see the difference in the way that looks as opposed to the way that the poofs and the little curls look? You can do a lot with deco mesh. I'm going to grab a long pipe cleaner and go around the middle twist it tightly and then I'm going to thread this down through onto that pole and wrap it around that pole that's underneath and it is going to be perfect fits perfectly if you pull it down pretty tightly into there then it almost disappears so just make sure that you kind of keep it floating just a bit I don't know why her hair won't act right on that side okay so the top of it you can take those two branches on the top and kind of pull them toward one another to complete that shape. I don't know if I actually have that on. I don't know if I recorded that for y'all or not, but I did do it. And then I'm just playing with her curls to make sure that I have everything the way I want it. Okay. Now, since we can see that orange underneath and I had a little of this orange tinsel off of another project, because you know I saved it, I thought, okay, well, let's just put... A couple of little pieces of randomly of this orange here and there in her little bundles of curls so it looks like all of that orange in the back is her her hair too she's kind of giving me medusa vibes what are y'all thinking a little bit maybe they're related i bet they're cousins yeah probably first cousins that's what we're gonna call it they have that little something that's familiar you know yeah Okay, so this is how she looks, so cute. But we have to adorn it, right? We've got to put some flies and some spiders on here. We gotta have a little extra fun going on. So I'm just using a little bit of hot glue on the back of a package of bugs. And if you don't have the solid orange and you can't find the bugs right now, just go in the kids section at Dollar Tree, get the brown ones and spray paint them. And I put one kind of climbing on her bow. She's friends with them. You know, witches are, spiders are familiars for witches, so they're totally cool, they're, they're totally fine together. No problem. No one's scared of a little bug anyway. Now, I decided once I got her hair together that I wanted to add a little more something on the top. So I just took one more bundle of the curls that we did before, which would give us six in total, and I'm just folding it in half and gluing it down to the back part of that other bow and that really gives her some height on top sister got the moose and the rave out for this hairdo yes she did so now if you want to go around and cut off little frayed edges you can but you know she's a witch it doesn't matter if she's got frayed edges check this girl out she's a stunner she so is a stunner let's give her a hanger now i'm going to just use another little scrap piece here just like this make a little keyhole and I'm gonna use some of this black tape why it left me in the last video that this is duct tape I was calling it gorilla tape no this is duct tape and it works very well and it will stick to metal very well so I'm gonna put it on the back of this and then fold that tape over onto the pole and then over on itself and then you can add a little hot glue if you want and that will lock it in place look at her yeah she's a beauty see now I'm just pulling those two up there you go see just pulled them up pull that top part around 
and now we've covered up the hanger too. Yes. You can skip that part if you want to. Yes, 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 yes. The next project is a flower box. This is an easy one. And this one came from Dollar Tree Products. This is a little tray, it's a jot tray. And it's in black. Some of these little decor pieces, these arched windows. And I'm gonna use two of those. I'm gonna use my E6000 and some more of that tape. We're gonna take all the tags off, and flip my little windows over, make this a double window. Metal can be difficult, so we're just gonna use some tape and some glue and we're just gonna just do this on a wing and a prayer. All right, so I'm gonna go over this on one side. I'm making sure I have enough to go over both of them, but I'm gonna just put it down on one side, kind of fold it. All right, and then I'm gonna add some of my glue a 6,000, several little dots of that, and hot glue in between. I had to break out the big gun for all this Halloween stuff, y'all. And then I'm going to make sure it's lined up, hold it in place, and then press the tape down in there. You're gonna flip up that other piece, the other side of the tape, and do the same thing. Now that our windows are together, we can put the ledge on, or the flower box. I'm going to use the same process to glue it down. We're gonna use some of the E6000. Then you can grab some hot glue and put that on there if you want to. Those th two things together, ta -ta, two things together are not going to hold it in place forever. So I'm going to make sure that I don't have this thing fall apart. Once I get it together, I'm going to go back on the inside where my glue gun is. And don't worry, you're not going to see this. You're not going to see this part because it is going to be under foam. Look at the smoke coming off of that thing. Y'all be careful. Protect yourself. Some glue guns get a lot hotter than others. I'm just using some weights to hold this down and in place while it dries. Once I feel like that is dried enough, I'm going to grab a strip of this tape and go across the bottom. This is gonna go across the bottom probably half inch of the windows and across the bottom of that little tray that we have in the front. That's gonna give it some extra security. Look how well that is sticking together. Plus it's black, it's not as noticeable. And I really like that. Now I'm gonna take some scraps of foam that I have, and this just came out of packaging uh, for things that I've ordered. I like to save it and reuse it, save money where we can. Then I'm just going to take some pieces of the foam and cut them down to the right size so that they fit on the inside. If you cut them perfectly, you don't have to worry about them being glued in because they'll stay. But you can certainly glue it if you would like. All right, so I've got some Spanish moss and I'm just going to use it to put on top because that is white. I don't want it to, to show through. So I'm just going to put this down. I'm not gluing it at all. I'm just gonna let the flowers, when I put those in there, stick to it. These flowers I love. I realize when you look at the leaves, they almost look like a Christmas flower, but they are stunning and the color looks so good with the raven crafts that I've been doing. Oh, I'm really thinking I'm going to have to do that black. I'm going to have to do that. Oh, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to do the Edgar Allan Poe thing this year for Halloween. I'm really feeling that romantic, spooky vibe this year. We'll see what happens, though. So I'm going to start in the back. Some of these pieces on this pick have three, and some have one. I did get this at the thrift store, so I can't really tell you how much it costs, but I would venture to say that if a pick this big was at Michael's or over at Hobby Lobby, you'd probably pay about 20 bucks for it. I mean, this is a substantial piece. All right, so you can see me just filling in the back. I am gonna turn it so that you can see what I'm doing here shortly. Once you get the back level, you wanna make sure that you cut the pieces that are gonna go in front of it just a tad shorter. You want, the, you want some depth in there, so just a little bit shorter. And I'm having some come out the sides can see here I'm gonna have this one just kind of coming out the side a little bit and then I'll put some more of the pieces with three right in the front 
really easy. You can use whatever type of flowers you like. If you have black leaves, you could use black leaves in here. Um, I'm trying to think of what else you might, what other types of flowers you would want to use. I don't know. What would you use? Um, I think the cosmos would be beautiful in here, but I ran out, so I'm on the hunt for more cosmos. Absolutely love that purple cosmos. And then you're just going to continue to fill in until you either get use all of it or until your little heart is happy with what it looks like. So now let's address the white down here. First off, I'm going to use a really thin piece of black ribbon. This is just some burlap ribbon. And I'm going to cut it down so that it will wrap around and it is perfect. I think it's about an inch wide. It will fit perfectly across and cover up the white inside of there. And then I'm going to do the other side and trim off whatever you don't need. Protect your fingers because you know how it is. Hot gun, very hot glue, and tender fingers. So far, this is how it looks. And I know that I've got to hang it or stand it up. And look, we have the convenience of hangers on the back, so you can use it either way. Now I'll take more moss. And I am going to press that down into the front and into the base where I have the flowers poked in there because um, I don't want any of that white showing. And it's going to stay in there fine by itself. You may have a little bit of shedding, but I don't have a big problem with my arrangements that I do with, with the Spanish moss. It's all in how you do it. And feel free after you get it together to just, you know, trim it up, give it a little haircut if it needs it. I think this is a beautiful piece of romantic, spooky, everyday decor that you could have in your bedroom. You could have anywhere in your house. You could have it as part of a display with some spooky books. You know, you could have this on your fireplace, on a narrow shelf, anywhere you like. It is just, it's a really pretty piece that really doesn't even scream Halloween. Look at these big projects that we did today. Look at this. Now, this is not my Halloween backdrop. This is my summer backdrop because this is Halloween, right? Right. When you come back for Halloween crafts, you're going to see something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So there's the, you remember that saying, I smell children? The little, the witch, which witch is it? The one with the black hair. And she goes around saying, I smell children. And she finds the little girl inside of the little hut, their little haunted house that they live in. Mm -hmm. Love it. And then there is this very fun and festive. This would be so pretty at a party. And you could actually even use this, I think, with some lights in it. it would be really cute. If y'all enjoyed this video and you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs that are unique, that will make your little heart happy and that will be an exact reflection of what you love in your home and what brings you joy i would love for you to subscribe because that's what we do here if you enjoyed the video and you have other people who would enjoy half a wane videos please share the video and give it a thumbs up if you're enjoying it so that i can do more of these videos for you who love halloween all year Look at these pieces. And which one of these do you think you'll be trying this summer for Halloween? Thank you so much for coming by once again. And I will see you very soon. Bye. Mwah.